welcome back to the Pin Feathers and Pearls podcast. My name is Candice and I will be your host. This is Yoshi and he is my feathery co-host and the pin feathers to my pearls. This is a knitting and generally yarny goodness podcast, sometimes with some other crafts thrown in. If you are a new viewer, thank you so much for deciding to check out my podcast and give it a shot. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. It really means a lot to me that you come back episode after episode and decide to spend a little bit of your time with me. Um, this is episode 34. Today is Friday, um, I was about to say September. It is not September. Today is Friday, April the 14th. And yeah, I have the day off from work, so I figured it was about time that I recorded another podcast. So here I am, kind of in a different location because I thought that the light um, would be better because there's a, my patio door is like right in front of me, so I thought it'd be better, but there's still some glare on my face, but we'll deal. Um, and since Yoshi's cage is not in view, I thought that I would... Um, bring him on here just to say hello. So there he is. Say hi, Yosh! He's not saying hi. <laughs> there he is for y'all. He's such a good bird. You gonna hang out with me for a little bit? Okay. So if you want to find me on the interwebs, you can find me as transitory on both Instagram and Ravelry. Um, and if you want to join the Ravelry group, there is a Ravelry group for this podcast where I post all the show notes for each episode. And you can just find that by searching for Pin Feathers and Pearls. But there should also be a link for the group in the down bar below. Um, yeah, uh, that glare is super distracting. Maybe I should move. I got all set up here, but now I'm thinking that I should just kind of readjust my setup. So, let me see if I can do that, just because I'm going to take my glasses off, but then I don't look like myself. So, let me readjust things. Okay, I'm back where I normally am. Um, I think that is better. It seems better to me. I don't know. I should have just done this to begin with. What am I doing? So, where was I? Um... So like I said, today is April the 14th, and so if you've been following along with this podcast for a little while, you will know that right now, um, today is actually the last day of the Stripey Socks, Cal. <laughs> uh, so it ends today, so I'm not sure if I will have this podcast up by the end of today, but I mean, if I do, today is the last day to get your socks into the finished objects thread. Um... If this podcast goes up anytime after today, then I'm what I'm saying has no meaning. But uh, so I won't go too much into this into the knit along since it is ending. Um, but yeah, today is the last day for that. So there has been so many stripy socks added to the finished objects thread, and I am really excited and happy by how many people have knit stripy socks for this cow. It's made me really happy. I will say though that there, I have done a quick look through the FO thread and there are a few people who have submitted socks that are not eligible. Um, so they were knit in variegated yarns. Uh, so when I do close the thread and draw for winners, I'm probably gonna do a quick go through all the posts and end up deleting those ones just because um, they aren't, they're not stripey. So I'm really sorry if that's you, but um, those be the rules, guys. <laughs> so yes, that's all I'll say about that. Sorry, one more thing to say about the Stripey Socks Cal is I got another prize in the mail. So I thought that I had received all my prizes, but um, I got another prize in the mail and this one was generously donated to me by Sharon, who is Seashore Sharon on Instagram. I think she's Seashore Sharon on Ravelry as well. And she made this lovely um, project bag, which I don't want to take out of the packaging because she has it packaged up pretty nicely. But it is a beautiful patchwork um, project bag and it is lovely. 
Thank you so much, Sharon, for donating this prize. Whoever wins this is going to be a very lucky person. So yeah, this is another prize for the Stripey Socks Cal. And I'm thinking instead of waiting until my next uh, episode, because knowing my recording schedule, <laughs> who knows when that'll be, um, I may uh, record another little video just for Knit Along prize winners, but we'll see. Uh, so yeah, that like I said, that Knit Along ends tonight, and yeah. Thanks again, Sharon. So I have to apologize for how rushed and kind of like crappy my last episode was. I was completely distracted because Mass Effect Andromeda had come out like just the day or so before. So it was not my best episode. Um, but I just wanted to give a little update on Mass Effect Andromeda because the honeymoon period for me in that game appears to be a bit over. Um, as you may or may not know, I'm a huge Mass Effect fan. I love Mass Effect. And I'm super excited when Andromeda came out because, I mean, as you can tell, I was super pumped to play Andromeda. And I've played through a lot of the game. I still think the game is quite fun, but it just... It's just not the same as the original trilogy, guys. It's just not the same at all. I miss the Normandy. I miss my space boyfriend, Garrus. Like, there's no one in the new game that... I was gonna say, that I wanna bang. But yeah, essentially, there's no one in the new game that I wanna bang. Like, there's... like Because, you know, you can have romances in the game. That's a big part of Bioware games. There's no aliens that I want to bang in this one, guys. So, my like, I'm going to probably finish the game because I really want to finish it so I could pick up um, a couple of other games. But there's no point in me getting other games that haven't finished this one yet. So, yes, that's just my little update on how things with Andromeda is going, which makes no sense for me to even talk about since this is a knitting podcast. But if you've been tuning in this long, it's not a surprise or a secret that I'm a gamer and uh, that stuff just pops into conversation with me. So, yeah. No bangable aliens so far. Alright, so let's get on to some of the nitty gritty. See what I did there? Uh, I have an F.O. So, my, this is the only F.O. I have and I was hoping to have more than this but I'll get into that later. <laughs> so I do have a finished object, and that is my Molly Weasley socks. These are, um, the yarn for this is Nomadic Yarns in the Molly Weasley colorway, uh, and it is in her, I think it's the Brit Sock base. It's the one with BFL and nylon, so I believe that's Brit Sock. Uh, so it's Molly Weasley in the Brit Sock base. I knit these toe up, with 60 stitches on uh, my Chiagu Interchangeables US 1s. And I mentioned in previous episodes that I was going to do a true afterthought heel for these socks. And you guys, I did it. I was super nervous about doing it, so I'm super proud that I did it. Um, so yeah, I cut the yarn for this heel. And you guys, it was life changing. It was like a mind blown sort of thing. I was so scared to do it. And now that I have done it, I can't imagine doing afterthought heels any other way now. Because I always liked how afterthought heels fit, but I always hated doing it with the scrap yarn because I would always get these gappy holes at the corner. And I think a lot of people have problems with that. But when you cut in for the afterthought heel, like, you don't get that. What am I doing? You don't get that at all on either side. There is no... There's no gappy holes there, guys. It was amazing! It is amazing! So, I'm a true convert to the true afterthought heel. Um, the only tutorial that I used for this was the Kirby Wurby video, which I'm sure 
many of you have watched. It's kind of like the gold standard of Afterthought Heel tutorials, I think. So I will put a link to that in my show notes, but I gotta tell you, like, if you are scared to cut your yarn for an Afterthought Heel, don't be. It was deceptively simple to do. Um, and now I will never do an Afterthought Heel any other way. It was amazing. So <laughs> I'll stop gushing about that now because yeah, but it was amazing. So yeah, these are my Molly Weasley socks. I really love how they turned out. I kind of wish I had done the leg a bit longer. I usually do my leg a bit longer than this. Um, but that's okay. I mean, it's not a big deal. They're still a pretty good length. I did a surprisingly stretchy bind off. And I actually really like how they turned out on these socks. So, yeah, I'm super happy with this pair of socks. Like, really happy with them. And I'm really proud that conquered my fear of cutting my yarn and did that heel. Uh, so, yeah, that is my 1FO this week. I always say this week when I definitely don't podcast every week. So that's my 1FO this episode. So now on to works in progress and this next work in progress that I'm about to show you I was really hoping was going to be an FO. In fact I had told myself I'm not going to record a podcast until I finish this project but as the days went on I was like if I don't record a podcast until I finish this project you guys aren't going to get like a podcast episode until like May. <laughs> because I've lost some steam on this project, which is ridiculous because I'm on the last color of it. So I will briefly show you this project, but I'm not going to go too much into it because I'm really hoping that by the next time I podcast, and I really should be done this by the next time I podcast, because once I show you where I am on it, you will be like, you're almost done. Just finish it. Finish it. That just reminded me of the fountain finish it. Anyway, if you've seen that movie, you know. I love that movie. Anyway, I'm talking about my Find Your Fade. I'm on the last color and like, sorry, it is really, it is massive this thing so, and I don't want the stitches to fall off because that would just be a disaster. So, my Find Your Fade. It is almost done. I'm on the last freaking color, um, but yeah, I'm not going to go too much into this because next time I podcast, this is going to be an FO and I will show it to you in all its glory. It'll be blocked, it'll be amazing, and then I can stop talking about it, but because you've seen this, you've seen this a million times by now. So I'm on the last color, I will finish this by the next time I podcast. Hold me to it, guys, and then next time I podcast, I will go into the yarns and everything, but I'm not going to go, I'm not going to talk about this anymore. I'm just going to put it over here. I do have a couple of other works in progress that I have been working on, or that I cast on for, actually, because these are new cast-ons. So, the first FO, or the first FO, uh, the first whip that I'm going to show you is in my lovely I Heart You bag. And look, I got a little roll-it pin. Which just reminds me that I never finished Pokemon Sun. But yeah, anyway. My roll-it pin and my Barn Owl pin in my I Heart You bag. I cast on for another pair of socks, which is just what you do when you finish a pair of socks. Um, so I cast on for another pair of stripey socks, just because I have a lot of, um, self-striping yarn, so I wanted to start using it. <laughs> so this is another stripey sock. I am knitting this out of Valkyrie Fibers in her Aowen colorway. And this is the matte sock base, so it's a 75-25 Superwash Merino Nylon. And you guys, this, I fell in love with this colorway the minute I saw it, so, like, the way, like, it's just gorgeous. I love how it's knitting up. So I'm just knitting a 
It was gonna be just a vanilla sock, and then I decided for some visual interest, um, I decided whenever a color change happened, I would slip the fourth stitch um, as I went around. So that's what I've been doing, and that's kind of been creating this cute little staggered sort of effect. It's, it's very subtle, but I kind of like that. Um, it's just, just interesting enough. So I really like how that's turning out uh, with my little squirrel progress keeper, which I got from a viewer, I believe Amanda. Uh, so yeah, that's these. Uh, I'm doing something a little different with this sock. I'm knitting this sock on size zero um, circulars. And I decided because I'm going down a needle size, I would use a 64 stitch cast on just to see how that fit me. Um, and so far, I mean, I'm still just on the leg, so I, I can't really get a gauge on how well it's going to fit me. But it seems to be good. I like the fabric it's producing. And yeah, um, not much else to say about that one. <laughs> so yeah, that is... Um, one of my whips. I'm not sure what I'm going to do about the heel yet. Since I'm so in love with the afterthought heel now, this is a striped sock. I'm thinking I'll do another afterthought. But I'm not sure if I'm going to do it in a contrasting color or if I'm just going to do it in this yarn. We'll see. We'll see what I feel like when the time comes. Alright, and so for my next work in progress, I'm carrying it in my Fawn and the Fox spacey print bag. I have a Luna and Artemis um, zipper pull on it. This originally was a keychain, but it fell apart, so I just threw a lobster clasp on it and put it on this bag as a zipper pull. Anyway, I cast on for the Vortex shawl, which is a pattern by Charlotte Bory, and she is the host of the Charlotte and Gus podcast. So I cast on for the Vortex shawl. There's how far I am so far. There's how far I am so far. That's really great English, Candace. Really great. Anyway, so this is the Vortex Shawl. It is a brioche um, pattern. And then I might have a picture here to show you what it looks like. So this is what the middle of the pattern looks like. So it is... So the tip of it starts off as one color brioche and then it goes into two color brioche and then eventually you knit this garter stitch square or diamond in the middle with this color that you started off with and then you continue with the two color brioche ending with the one color brioche on the other side. If I explain that well at all. So yeah, that's the Vortex shawl. So if these yarns look somewhat familiar, maybe not because I only showed the project that they were being knit. They were being used to knit. Um, I think I showed it just like once before, but I ended up frogging that. I was using these yarns to knit an inky shawl and then I just, I, I put that project aside and I didn't look at it again. So I figured I didn't want to knit it and then the Vortex shawl got released and I was like, I need to knit that. and. I am so far. Here's the back side of it. I just love how it's knitting up. So, for the first color that I used here for the one color brioche, I'm using a homespun house in You Cook I'll Sing in her Jeunesse base, which is her 100% superwash merino one ply base. Single ply base. Um, and then for the two color parts, I'm using these two skeins. They are Tosh Merino Light. Uh, this is Pink Clay. And then this is Birch Gray. So, love how those are together. So, that is the Vortex Shawl. And um, I really love how it's knitting up. I love... Brioche is so... Just... Let me look at it. Yeah, so I love how this is working out. It's another beard! So that's it for my knitting works in progress. Um, but I have been working on something else. 
and that is my quilt project so if you've been watching um if you watch past episodes you will know that i am taking part in jacqueline of brooklyn knit folk she is hosting a quilt along and so i decided to dive right in head first and make my very first quilt also my very first sewing project so before i show you my progress on that let me just start by saying that if you can see that over there that is my new sewing machine uh, i say new but it's a used sewing machine <laughs> So the Singer sewing machine that I showed in my last podcast episode or a couple podcast episodes ago, uh, that machine, well, let's just say it was old. It had been sitting unused for God knows how long. And so when I finally decided to start sewing with it, it, it just did not want to work. It was creating... I think the I believe the term for it is nesting on the back side of um, my sewing and I just I tried every tip that I could find on YouTube and on sewing forums on different websites to try to fix it and it just wasn't being it just wasn't working out so I was like well I don't know what to do um, so I was thinking I was just gonna go in and get it serviced and looked at to see what was wrong with it but then I went on Kijiji on a whim just to see uh, what what was on sale that was used. Um, I went on Kijiji to see <laughs> if there was any used sewing machines, perhaps at a decent price on sale. And up popped a listing that had just been listed, like, I think within the hour, uh, for a Janome. And it is a Janome Harmony. Um... And it was on sale for $50. And I was like, I don't know much about sewing machines, but I do know that Janome is considered a pretty good brand. And $50 for one, I was like, come on. So I messaged uh, the woman who was selling it. I made time in the week to go over and test it out. Uh, it turns out that she was selling it because she had recently upgraded her machine. I tested it out. It worked beautifully. It's cute and small. Um, so I bought it. So now I have a lovely new sewing machine. It works like a charm. And I was able to get started on my quilt top, finally. So I will show this to you now. Please keep in mind that this is like my very first sewing project. It's not perfect by any means, but regardless of that, like, I'm pretty dang proud of it. Um, so I've done... I've done eight rows so far, and I have a total of 18, so I'm just a little under halfway done. Um, and I've just been sewing them all together as I finish the strips, just because it's just easier for me to keep track of them that way. So... Here she is. I'm gonna stand up, actually, because it's pretty wide. getting blown out. So there she is. Um, like I said, she's by no means perfect. I mean, just right there, you can see that, like, it's not, it's not meeting up perfectly by any means. But, um, there are parts of it that are matching up, that make me super excited. Of course, I can't find any of that right now, but rest assured, it's not all crooked. Just mostly is. So I can't see my screen, my camera right now, but I'm going to assume that this is on screen still and I'm showing it to you. Um, so yeah, I'm not even halfway done and this thing is massive already, but just seeing it come together, it makes me super excited. It just makes me go like, oh my god, I, I made this. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really proud considering this is my first sewing project, so um, I'm really proud of how it's coming together. And it's really exciting seeing the fabrics that I chose um, 
come together into a project this way. Like, it's just uniquely me. <laughs> yeah, that this is my quilt top. I'm really happy with how it is so far. Um, Jacqueline hasn't posted the next, at the time of this recording, Jacqueline hasn't posted the next video in the series or in the tutorial series yet, so I don't feel too rushed yet to um, finish this, but um, I'm making slow and steady progress on it. And look, see, here, look at that. Wait, what am I showing you? I know I just found a corner that matched up well. Well, pretty well. So, I'm very proud of it so far. It's gonna be huge. Um, <laughs> I'm already thinking about fabrics and ideas for my next quilt, and I'm getting way ahead of myself. I'm also trying to get up the gumption to sew um, like a garment. I'm thinking maybe a t-shirt. Uh, there's a couple patterns by Grainline Studios that I really like. I think the one that I'm looking at is called the Scout Tee, and there's also the Willow Tank. Um, so, slowly getting up some gumption to try my hand at sewing some garments, um, but we'll see when that happens. Right now I'm content to... I gotta finish the quilt top first, um, but that's my progress on it so far, and I'm really proud and happy with how it's turning out. I guess it's just one of those things where sewing intimidated me for so long, so to finally just get pluck up the courage to actually do it, it always makes me feel pretty proud. And I think that um, as adults, taking on new challenges, no matter how small they are, learning new things, no matter how small or insignificant you think they are, um, I think we should be proud of those things because it's hard to, to learn a new thing sometimes and sometimes it's hard to even just get started on those things. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm proud of myself and I really love how this is working up so far uh, and hopefully I will be done that quilt top soon because I was just on Instagram this morning and Laura of the Fond Knits she finished her quilt top, so, um, not like we're, like, it's not a competition or anything, but I'm just like, well, I gotta finish mine now, too. So, that is my quilt along project. It's been really fun so far. Uh, if you've been thinking about doing it, I highly recommend, like, just give it a go. You don't even have to make a quilt as big as what I'm doing. I just kind of went, go big or go home, and made a huge project. <laughs> So yeah, that's my quilt. And now on to some acquisitions, and I definitely do have some acquisitions this week. Um, so my first acquisition is, sorry, there's crinkling because it's still in the package. Um, so this is a dyer who I've ordered from once before, and that was like, several years ago I think it was in 2013 2014 and that is coloring book yarns and I never so many other people are able to catch her like very rare updates um, but I never do and so finally and I felt super bad doing this because on her Etsy page she says she's not taking custom orders but I've heard of so many people saying that they've messaged her and were able to get a special order, so against my better judgment, against everything that is in me that like if somebody says don't do it, I'm gonna respect that and not do it, I, I messaged her and I think I apologized like 10 times in my message to her like, you could say no, I'll totally understand if you don't want to do this, blah blah blah. But then she's like, yeah, no, totally I'll dye up some yarn for you. And I was like, oh my god. So anyway, all that to say, I ordered some coloring book yarns. Um, I'll just take it out of the package and show you. So I ordered two colorways that I really wanted. The first is Autumn and Mint. Coming with yarns. Um, 
really love how I've seen this one knit up a few times and I really like how it works up and I'm not even an orange person but like I just I love this colorway and then the second one is TV so yay I have coloring book yarns I'm so happy and thank you so I don't know if Anne's even watching this. She probably isn't. But thank you so much, Anne, for for dyeing these up for me. Um, even even though I still feel bad about messaging her. But yeah, these are amazing. So I now have coloring book yarns again. Um, the only other coloring book yarns that I've ever gotten is the BMO colorway, and I knit a pair of socks with those, which I never wear. Because I don't want anything to happen to those socks. I'm still surprised that I even knit them up at all. Um, but yeah. So there's that. And I actually... Um, I, I messaged Anne right before Anne and I went to Chicago. And that is the reason why I didn't go to any yarn shop while I was in Chicago. Because I was like... Um, I, just, I just ordered some coloring book yarns. So I don't need to go to a yarn shop. <laughs> um yeah so I have that but that's not all so I also made an order or I made an update I should say um, for some hay sister yarn so I'm sure you've heard of the hay sister podcast which is hosted by tabby and Rachel hi ladies so they also have the hay sister yarn company and uh, I really loved this colorway when I saw it so this is their Belle colorway, um, inspired by Belle from Beauty and the Beast. Okay, on the subject of Beauty and the Beast, I'm going to go into a segue. Um, so last weekend, I finally went with Aaron uh, to see the live action version of Beauty and the Beast, and I went into it very tentatively. I was worried initially going into it because so I think Emma Watson is sweet as pie I think she's a lovely lovely human being a lovely woman but she can't act okay so um so I was really scared going into Beauty and the Beast and guys I know a lot of people loved the movie and there are parts of it that I did enjoy but I was just so distracted by Emma Watson she can't sing like I just don't understand why they cast her no, like knowing that she's going to be the main character and like it's really super distracting to watch a movie where they're singing and all I could hear during any of her songs or any songs that she sang in was the auto-tune. Like, her voice is auto-tuned to death. And I was just like, if they were going to auto-tune her this much, they should have just... What? They should have just gotten T-Pain to do it. Like, I don't know. I just found it really distracting. And I, I feel... I feel a little bad complaining about it, but I can't change the fact that I am mad about Beauty and the Beast because it's my favorite Disney film. Um, Belle is the Disney princess that as a child I connected with the most. Um, Beauty and the Beast is just its very special to me and so to be so let down by this live action version I just was, I was not happy. Like I don't want to be too down on it because there were some really good parts. I actually really loved Dan Stevens as the Beast. Um, I think Luke Evans was phenomenal as Gaston, um, but just as a whole, I was not happy. Anyway, before I got onto that tangent, as I was saying, this is Belle by the Hey Sister Yarn Co. Obviously it was inspired by the yellow dress, which I'm about to segue into another rant again, but... This will be the last thing I say about Beauty and the Beast, I promise. But the yellow dress in the movie was not good. It was like a really 
bad prom dress. Oh my god. I'm probably gonna get like a bunch of thumbs downs from people who are like, Oh, I can't believe she would say that about Beauty and the Beast. It was amazing. Which is like, you know what? You can just thumbs down my video. But I just didn't like... I just didn't love the movie. I wanted to love the movie. There were parts of it I enjoyed, but I didn't love it. But I love this yarn. Anyway, the ladies also sent me this amazing skein of, um, it's a one-of-a-kind colorway, so there's no name for it, but it's on their MCN base, and it is so, I'm in love with it, so. Thank you so much, Tabby and Rachel. They also sent me a bunch of mini skeins, which I'm super excited about because among them is like some woolen boon, which I've been wanting to try. But I'm trying to be really good about um, spending money on yarn right now. I know that seems kind of counterproductive since I just showed you acquisitions, but I really am trying to be good about spending money on yarn. So they sent me a bunch of minis as well. Um, and oh, and also some stitch markers. And I think they're in the shape. There's a couple of heart ones and then there's a bunch of hexagons. And it's upside down. Ah, there you go. But these are really cute too. So thank you so much, ladies. This was an amazing package to receive. Um, so yeah, that is my acquisitions. And I'm really sorry about my ranty McRanterness about Beauty and the Beast. He's tapping. You have to do that. I take that as a yes. Anyway, uh, I did have a couple of questions in my Ask Me Anything thread that I am going to answer. Um, the first question is from Lorena Valerin. Oh, and I should just say, um, I have an Ask Me Anything thread in my Ravelry group. So if you have any questions for me regarding myself, knitting, uh, whatever it may be, you can go ahead and ask it in that thread. I'll either answer it in the um, thread itself or I'll answer it on the podcast. Lately, I've just been answering the questions in the thread itself, but I figured it's been a little bit since I've actually answered a question on the podcast, so I thought I would go ahead and answer a couple here. So anyway, um, the first question here is from Lorena Valerian. She says, I'm curious, do you have a go-to go -to toe-up sock pattern or something that you started learning with? Um, and then she goes on to say that she's never tried toe -up before, but she would like to. Um, I was much the same way when I was learning how to knit toe up socks because I learned how to knit socks cuff down uh, and for some reason for the longest time I was adamantly against trying toe up socks. Kind of like it the same way I was adamant against, you know, cutting my yarn for an afterthought heel. I just got stuck in my ways and I didn't want to try it. Um, but finally I decided I really wanted to try it. and. Uh, I didn't actually use a pattern for the first time I, I knit toe-up socks because if you've knit socks before, you, you'll know that, I mean, the only thing that differs with toe-up socks is going to be the cast on. So I just looked up a tutorial for the magic cast on. Um, I followed that. So normally when I knit socks cuff down and I de uh, decrease for the toe and I kitchen the toe, I'll decrease to about 12... 12 to 10 stitches um, per needle and then do the Kitchener. So I cast on 12 stitches per needle using the magic cast on and then I increased on either side um, until I got my desired length of stitches and then I just start knitting in the round. Um, there are a couple of ways that you can do, I'm showing you on my Molly Weasley socks. Um, so, so I cast on here and then here's where I did my increases. So there's a couple of ways that you can do your increases for your toe. The way that I like to do the increases for my toe, and I've talked about this before, is I like to, so I increase by, so I do it on magic loop. So on the first stitch of my needle, 
uh, I will knit into the front and back of that stitch and then I'll knit to the end of the needle until there are two stitches left and then on the second to last stitch I will do the knit in the front and back of the stitch again to increase again knit the last stitch flip it over do that again I'll knit into the front and back of the first stitch on the needle and then I will knit in the front and back of the second to last stitch on the needle and then for the second round I just knit all the way around I hope that made sense um, but that creates a nice increase on either side just like that and that's the way that I like doing my increases for my toe up socks um, I know that there you can also use make one lefts and make one rights but I found that when I did it that way it would kind of make my toe kind of concave upon itself I don't know if that makes sense like it would just I didn't like the shape it did so I did the knit front and back increase and that's what I've been doing ever since let's just see if you have anything else on your question And then, yeah, uh, depending on the type of heel you are wanting to put in, you knit your foot up until that point and then you'll pop in your heel. It depends on what type of heel you want to do. So, what I'm going to do is, after I'm done recording this, I'm going to reply to you in the thread and ask you what heel you're thinking of doing because it really depends when you start your heel, what heel you're going to do. Um, but I think the trickiest part of a toe-up stock, stock, a toe-up stock, the trickiest part of a toe-up sock is going to be the toe-upness of it and the cast-on of it. Um, the heel can be a little tricky depending on the heel you choose, but um, for, for me, it was the toe-up part that was the most tricky when I was learning how to knit toe-up socks. So I hope that helps you to some extent. On to the next question. So then my next question is from Sapphire Morpho. Um, she just says, hi Candice, I'm a new viewer. Uh, and then her question is asking me if I ever play World of Warcraft or Civilization V. So Civilization V, no, I don't play Civ. But Aaron plays Civ and he likes it a lot. I've watched him play it, but I've never actually played Civilization myself. I don't know why. It seems like a game that I would enjoy, but never played Civ for myself. World of Warcraft, though, um, I don't play it anymore. But I played World of Warcraft for years. <laughs> for years. Um, I played that game when it launched up until... I probably quit playing during Cataclysm, that expansion, so um, my main was a Draenei Mage, uh, so I was Alliance, and I did have a couple Horde characters, but my main and my highest level character was a Draenei Mage. Um, don't know what else I could say about it except that World of Warcraft was so much fun. Sometimes I get really nostalgic to play it again, but I remember I did try to play it again when... I can't even remember which expansion, but they had it on sale. So I downloaded it and installed it, but they had changed so much about the game that I was completely lost. So I... That was the day that I was like, yeah, I'm probably never going to get back into this game. And I uninstalled it from my computer and I have not played it since. Um, but yes, I did play World of Warcraft for years and sometimes I miss it. Uh, but not enough for me to actually start playing it again. Um, but yes, thank you so much for your question. Those are all the questions that I had to answer. Okay, so... On to recommendations. Um, and last episode I was a complete failure and I didn't give any. So I'm going to come at you with three recommendations this episode. Um, one for a podcast, like an audio podcast, one knitting podcast, and one Netflix show. Maybe two. We'll see when I get to that. <laughs> so my first recommendation is for an audio podcast. And it is an audio podcast that has been recommended to me before and it took me forever to finally listen to it. And then I did. And the first episode I listened to at work, which was a mistake because I was like cry laughing. 
It was hysterical. And then I was like, I, Aaron needs to listen to this with me. So I didn't continue on. I made Aaron listen to it. And when, since then, we've been listening to it together and just like laughing our asses off. Um, so that audio podcast is called, and this is not going to be for children. So just, yes. Uh, it's called My Dad Wrote a Porno. <laughs> And it is absurd. So it's literally about this one guy. I think Jamie is his name. Um, his dad wrote an erotic novel. Uh, and so it he reads it on the podcast with two of his friends, um, his co-hosts. And it's just... I mean, just the idea of one of your parents writing an erotic novel is... Oh my god. But when you actually listen to this novel that his dad has written, and his dad's pen name is Rocky Flintstone. It's hysterical, you guys. You you have to listen to it. Of course, listen to it not in the same room with your children, because it goes there. And it's just so funny. I, I, would, I cry from laughter sometimes. And like, We've listened to a couple of episodes while, we, while we've been out and about and driving, and I recommend not doing that because you'll it's that funny at some points. So, um, yeah, my dad wrote a porno is my first recommendation. It is an audio podcast. Just give it a listen. It is hysterical. It is just completely hysterical. I cannot believe <laughs> that it exists. Uh, <laughs> and so my second recommendation will be for a knitting podcast. There are a lot of knitting podcasts out there in the world so sometimes it takes me a while to watch a new one uh, but I've recently started watching this one and it's relatively new. I think it's about 10-ish episodes um, but I really like it uh, and that is the Anxious Knitter podcast and it is hosted by Joy and I think she is delightful. She just has a personality that is easy to watch. Um, she's a relatively new knitter, but you pro she's great. Uh, I just love her personality. I love her projects. I love her yarn choices. She is an adorable dog. Um, her husband makes project bags. And she's just super relatable and cool. So go check out Joy at the Anxious Knitter podcast. Uh, you won't regret it. I quite enjoy her. So there is recommendation number two. <laughs> um, and then for my last recommendation, it is for a Netflix show. And it is a show called Samurai Gourmet. And it is truly a delightful show. And I watched, started watching it just randomly. And it, it's just so good. It is just so pure and full of joy. It's simply just the show. It's a Japanese show, so it's going to have subtitles. But it's a show about a Japanese man who retires from his job. And, oh, the clouds are going over the sun, so the lights changed. Um, <laughs> so it's about a Japanese man who retires from his job, and then he just goes around his town and eats different types of foods and tries different things and just discovers the joy of the little things in life and it is just it's just one of those shows that just makes you feel all warm and happy inside because it's so heartwarming and pure and just amazing so i would recommend that show so samurai gourmet it's it's a ridiculous premise but it's actually really good and it'll make you super hungry for all the foods and actually after Aaron and I watched that show we decided to make um I think it's called spaghetti Neapolitan but it's basically Japanese spaghetti and oh my god it's so good it is delicious so if I can find the recipe that we use to make that I will put that in my show notes as well because it is seriously so yummy um like we made it twice in a week after <laughs> after the first time we made it because it was so good so yes those were my three recommendations hope that makes up for last week when i didn't have any um 
I was just like, peace out guys, I'm playing my game now. But yeah, those are my recommendations. I also watched another show on Netflix recently and I'm I'm hesitant to really call it a recommendation because uh, that show messed me up. Like it made me a complete mess. Like after I watched, after we finished it, um, I spent the next day like randomly crying because it's just the subject matter hits hit me pretty hard. Um, and that show is Thirteen Reasons Why. Um, I guess I will still recommend it, but I will recommend it to you with full discretion and disclosure that um, there's scenes of rape. And there is a suicide scene. And it doesn't shy away from these scenes. Like, it's not gratuitous. It's for the sake of the story. Um, but it's super hard to watch. And that last episode, just, just thinking about it, it's just a little too much for me. So, and yeah, so I recommend it, but just be in the right mood and frame of mind to watch it it is it is a really good show though it was really well. okay sorry my ipad ran out of space um so i had to delete some apps um <laughs> but yeah anyway 13 reasons why as i was saying i do recommend it i think it really was really well done the subject matter is an important one um and actually after i watched the show i used my audible credit to listen to the audiobook and um the book isn't as good so that doesn't really happen very often but it definitely happened in this case i think the show is way better than the book was for sure um so i yeah i guess i will recommend that show as well just with full discretion that it will break your heart um and yeah so there's more recommendations for you this week <laughs> yeah other than that there's there's not much else to say um i think that's it for me this this week so thank you so much guys for taking time out of your day to watch my um little corner of youtube um i hope you enjoyed what you saw um like I said, you can join the Ravelry group. The Cal is ending today, uh, but I'm not sure when or, well, I probably will host another Cal. I just don't know when. It'll probably be not for a little bit. Need a little break from Cal's. Um, but yeah, uh, so that ends today. So there's not much else to say there, but come join the Rav group. Um, find me on Instagram and until next we meet, um, I hope you spend some time enjoying or doing all the things you enjoy. Hope you enjoyed this long weekend because it's a long weekend for me. That's why I'm recording on a Friday. If you celebrate Easter, I hope you have a happy Easter. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Thanks guys. And I'll see you next time. Bye. I started waving like before I said, but anyway, bye. Bye.